All right. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging in there. You are doing great. I'm so proud of you. Yay. Um, so guys, on the very end here, I'd like to introduce um, Sergeant Vince Aguirre um, of the LAPD, uh, Emergency Operations Division, and Motion Picture Television Film Unit, Film Permit Enforcement Unit all of those things. So he's gonna to talk to us today about um, just precautions and considerations when filming locally here in Los Angeles. Some of this may be familiar to you guys, some of it might not be. Um, so we can, we can definitely make it a dialogue, but I, I gave him some key talking points that uh, I asked him to go through, so. Okay, I'm ready. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Can, is this okay, or do I have to get a little closer? That really close is good. Yeah, okay. or, or you can hold it if you want. Feel yeah, free to hold it. That's probably that's probably going to be better. Okay, so uh, as you know, I'm, I'm with uh, Big Blue LAPD. I've got about 31 years on the job. Would you believe? And for the last, uh, I think, seven, eight years, I've been uh, assigned to OCB special events. And in special events, we handle. Uh, two different types of permits. We, we handle the First Amendment permits and the Bureau of Street Services permits. So basically, if uh, you and your close friends want to do a protest or a march down Main Street uh, between Olympic and uh, First Street, you do a First Amendment permit. It's pretty much free. Uh, you can actually uh, do that and have the full city of Los Angeles uh, writing with you in the back and protecting your event and allowing you to exercise your First Amendment right. Uh, the second type of permit is a boss permit. It's a Bureau of Street Services permit that allows someone to completely shut down a street to do a street fair, uh, farmer's market, uh, the LA Marathon, and uh, some special events. And why do we want, why do we want to have permits? To do uh, because, <laughs> I'm glad you ask. Because the film permit, would you believe, is a special event. Uh, 4120A of the LAMC section allows a permit holder to um, have a, a film permit to do filming in the city of Los Angeles. And the reason why we give you that, it allows you to have um, certain authority and jurisdiction in an area which you can come in. So. Uh, you're going to be filming on a street. You can close down a street. You can do a street clo uh, a curb, curb lane closure, all these closures. We'll get into that in a little bit. But that's the whole reason why we bring up this whole permit thing because it's very important that um, it allows my office, and, and that's why the LAPD is involved, by the way. Uh, someone has to enforce the permit, so that's why it, it comes out of our office. All right, so some of the local resources that we use to get permits, would you believe prior to about 2005, give or take, um, if you were uh, trying to get a film permit in the city of Los Angeles, you literally had to go through um, uh, building and safety. You had to go through Department of Transportation. You had to go to the fire department. You had to go to the police department. You had to go through all these different hurdles just to get a film permit. So the city of Los Angeles contracted a contractor called Film LA. Film LA is basically the coordinator of all the information regarding your film permit, your uh, permit activity. They will handle your street closures, your uh, curb lane closures. They handle all of they, they handle everything to do with the uh, the permit. The Los Angeles Police Department, we are the authority. Once they get all that information, and they tell us that you know there's going to be 10, five tons and the condors and all of this stuff happening, the permit comes to me. Once it comes to me, we review it, uh, and we're gonna go through a couple of things later on here, but uh, once we review it, we give it the blessing, and boom, you are given your permit. You download it or you pick it up from their office, and that basically allows you to do your, your activity. So Film LA, no matter what, uh, they're your they are your best bet one-stop shop, although there are a lot of permit services out there, and you know what? If anybody's involved with the permit service in this room, my apologies. Bypass the middleman, deal directly with uh, Film LA. Okay. But I will say it is sometimes helpful it is if you're yeah. really, really bogged down. So yeah, it, is, it, it can be kind of not cost effective to have that middleman, but right. at the same time, if you're dealing with a whole slew of them, sometimes it is helpful. But. Yes, okay. <clears throat> so um, going down here, uh, so once you're on set, you're, you're, you're filming in the neighborhood and all that, 
the local resources that you have obviously is the Los Angeles Police Department. So when we, okay, when we look at the, the issues and, and this whole seminar this, this, ap- this morning was about safety on the set. Uh, listening to this, uh, this gentleman here on the end, I go, why would anybody want to film outside of the city of Los Angeles is beyond me. <laughs> but Talking it's very crazy. hard to film yeah. in Los Angeles yeah. too. <laughs> <laughs> crazy stuff. But what we do, uh, my film unit, uh, we go out and we, uh, we actually go to every single division in the LAPD. We train our officers to what to look for, uh, what happens uh, at a film location. Because you know the bottom line, the biggest enemy out there for you guys, would you believe, is the neighborhood. The neighborhood will complain, complain, complain about a, a film production that's in their neighborhood with the lights and all that other stuff. And you know, some of you are smiling in this room, but we've taken a survey, about 98% of all the complainants, guess what? People. Are in the industry. <laughs> I believe that. Oh yeah, you can film all you want, but just don't film in my backyard. It's crazy, <laughs> some of the people that we, uh, we talk to. But uh, my unit consists of uh, four people. Check this out. We have, uh, we do about, uh, we approve about 50 to 70 permits per day. There's about 150 film locations uh, per day in the city of Los Angeles. Last year we did over 20,000 uh, film permit a- approvals. And uh, if you, if you uh, listen to our mayor, about uh, 20 seconds into every single one of his uh, speeches, what does he say? He has brought back filming, uh, the filming industry back to Los Angeles. But with only four officers, you guys are probably wondering, how do we do it? Uh, we, we actually don't. We probably visit 2% of all the uh, film productions here in Los Angeles, and we rely on our divisions and mostly the neighborhood to call us, and they will. There's a huge network uh, they'll call us whenever they feel um, there's an illegal permit or something unsafe is is occurring in the in the in the neighborhood. One of those things is uh, obviously road closures. Uh, you know, there's um, not much to say about that. You guys know how to do all those, right? Uh, I see permits come through where okay. So we have what we call the. Uh, ITC, Intermittent Traffic Control, which is a two-minute standard, right? Everybody knows that? But we, we'll get a permit that comes through. They want to flip a car, crash something, have a guy hang glide in, and, they, and that's it. They, they think they can do that within two minutes. Obviously, we will <laughs> no? kick that back. <laughs> we will kick that back and make you guys do a full street closure. Once you guys do a full street closure, you guys have to hire the officers in the uniform on the bikes. You get some 70-year-old guy sitting there on his, on his motorcycle on the corner, you know, making sure. Am I right? Uh, uh, making sure that um, everything is is uh, hunky dory with but your not, street closure. Not PAs. Not yeah, that's correct. Not PAs. Uh, so then, uh, then you have your uh, lane closures. Uh, we, we make you guys do a lane closure if you guys have equipment in the lane, working equipment, condor, camera, because uh, there's the difference between a lane closure and a regular posting is posting is for picture. You, you know, when you watch a movie, you know, the, the, their hero always pulls up to the apartment and boom, finds a parking spot. Well, that's all done with posting. <laughs> 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 That's all done with posting. But if you're going to have a condor in the, in the, uh, on, parked on the side, you have actually people working in the curb lane, we have to do a curb lane closure. And again, that requires the officers for safety uh, to, make that, to make that happen. All right, filmmaker's code of conduct and your responsibility. I'm not going to get into that, but uh, Film LA has their, uh, the, the code of conduct for you guys on their website, the California Film Commission has it. It's basically uh, How to not be stuff. a jerk while filming. And yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, be careful. Be careful uh, with language and stuff. And, and yeah, just, just make sure you're, you're good. You know, I always tell people, my office, we balance the chaos between the community and the film industry to make sure that everybody plays right in the sandbox. And it, it, we could, there are neighborhoods in the city we can have uh, 15, 20 uh, film days in a neighborhood every couple weeks. 
and the neighborhood loves it. They, they don't care. But I have other neighborhoods in the city that one film production, and oh my God, they want a three-year respite. They, they are con- contacting the mayor's office. They're contacting everybody, and they don't want the filming. So, you know, it's, uh, there's the responsibility of, of all of us to ensure that once we're in a neighborhood, we respect the neighborhood that we're in. So how do you do that? You get an outstanding location manager. Okay, I, I've dealt with some some managers, some location managers that, quite frankly, ugh, but I've I've also dealt with some pretty good ones, and everyone knows uh, p- filming in the city of Los Angeles is normal hours seven to ten Monday through Friday. Anything beyond the, those hours, if you're going to film overnight, you're going to film before, you're going to film on weekends. We have to do a survey. Uh, we have to do a survey, the survey comes back, and the production company will take a look at that and they'll say, well, you know what, Vince Aguirre that lives at 123 Main Street, he's having issues because his kid is um, having school, whatever, whatever. So you guys, the production company goes back, they'll visit Mr. Vince at 123 Main Street, and you guys will try to mitigate whatever you guys need to do. Word of caution, word of caution, I call it uh, making the deal with the devil. A lot of companies, especially the big ones, the big companies will come in, they'll flaunt that cash, and they'll, they'll, they'll pay people off, and, and it's, kind of, it's, it, it's kind of comical. I mean, I'll have some neighbors call me and say, oh my God, they're filming for three nights in a row, this is incredible, overnight, there's uh, playback, they're singing in the street, you know, after they came out with La La Land, it's like every other, feature at night was some musical. But all of a sudden, uh, we get them hooked up with the production company, they get paid off. Or they're, get, they're, they're put up in a hotel room for the weekend and, and stuff is taken care of. Be very cautious. Um, I tell my officers, and Film LA also says the same thing, we, we try not to get into that because you're, you're making <laughs> the deal with the devil. Because next thing you know, when the small production company shows up um, with a low budget, maybe one or two trucks, and you know they're, they're just trying to barely make it here, uh, that neighbor is gonna be demanding three, $4,000 to, to have a, a, a production. That's what causes the friction, okay? So just be careful about that. Um, when you're scouting your location, uh, make sure that you kind of realize what kind of content you're doing. And you know what? We're not here to regulate content. No, no, we're not. You know, a um, Pop-Tarts commercial in the Palisades is not going to garner any issues with any neighbors. But if you guys want to go burn a cross in Nickerson Gardens, that is an issue. Uh, that is when you should reach out to your local police department uh, contact the community relations office, call my office, so then that way we can probably do a little bit of reaching out and making sure you connect with both the officers that are in charge of that area, but most, most important, the community groups that are in that area, just to make sure that everybody's on the understanding that it's only a film. Um, there was a controversial police shooting. Not all of them are controversial. There was a uh, <laughs> controversial police shooting back east, I think, I believe, um, back east, uh, they were doing a lot of protest. Uh, they were turning cars upside down, you know, doing your typical protest. And there was a production company that wanted to come in and recreate a protest of a uh, controversial police shooting in front of City Hall. So they wanted to close down um, Spring Street on the steps. They wanted to do all of this stuff. We actually got that production to put it off for a week only because the week that they were planning on doing it was the same week that this other real protest was, was going on. So kind of understand the, the content, kind of understand the community that you're going into, uh, please. And then uh, when you do your tech scouts and, and all that, please, the, the LAPD, we do not charge. <laughs> uh, call, call, call my office or call the local division where you're gonna be filming in. If you think you're going to have an issue or you think the content is gonna be questionable, give them a call and they'll, uh, they'll connect you guys with the, with the right people. And you'll come out on our scout? Uh, you know what? I, I can send one of my guys. Hey. Uh, one of the, I learned two things. Uh, yeah, let, let, <laughs> now let's just talk about the homelessness issues here in Los Angeles. You know what? 
It's uh, one of those things that happens, right? Uh, but we do have productions that love to go into Skid Row, and then they're calling my office saying, hey, Sergeant Aguirre, we want to film on the corner of Fifth and Wall, but there's 25 tents, and I need you guys to move these guys out. Well, guess what? I don't think we can do that. ACLU would be all over my, will, will be all over me. But we have had successful uh, productions go into the Skid Row area and convince the homeless or motivate the homeless to, to move on. So we will not, we will not uh, go in and make them pack up their tents uh, and have them shoe to have Buena Vista come in and, and, and do some uh, filming there. But we will work with the HOPE teams, uh, PATH, uh, and all of the groups that are down in the Skid Row area to try to get you guys to, uh, we'll try to mitigate as best as possible and hopefully we get compliance uh, from them. Okay? All right. You know what? I'm power. I'm really, I'm I know, going kind of fast. It's good all stuff. Right. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> I'm gonna spend some time on this one. Special filming conditions in the city of Los Angeles, neighborhood relations. Guys, let me tell you. Like I said, we have neighborhoods that love filming. They love us. Film all you want. And I have neighbors, neighborhoods that one production comes in and you know what? Whew, it's the end of the world. They're calling everybody and their mom. Know your surroundings. Know where you're going to film. Some more stories, and if anyone in this room is part of these productions, I'm not gonna mention the names, but I am gonna mention the locations, so I will see your faces if this is you. <laughs> All right, filming Griffith Park. There was a, uh, a production in uh, Griffith Park. They were doing your typical uh, scene in the park. The entire crew was uh, taking its break. Everybody was eating. People were at catering, all that. Homeless guy comes out of the woods with an ax oh, and takes out their $50,000 camera that was <gasps> sitting in the middle of the, um, the park. You probably would have heard about this. It happened uh, towards the end of last year. So uh, they had their great evacuation plan. They, the safety of, of all the crew, everybody kind of fell back. They called 911. Uh, they were kind of in this, um, Rutted area, if you, if you ever go to Griffith Park, uh, I'm sorry, Elysian Park, over by the police academy, ironic, huh? Um, there's a little park in the back uh, where the bridge is, and, and that's where this crew was. And this homeless guy just comes out of nowhere and just uh, takes over and, and kills the camera. Uh, he was arrested for a felony, uh, felony vandalism, probably uh, ordered to pay restitution. Good luck. That's where your insurance company comes in. But... Um, the reason why I say this is know the area that you're in. Now let's just take that somewhere else. Hancock Park, best place to uh, film your uh, television shows, right? Hancock Park, I have a guy, not gonna mention any names, I'm not gonna mention the TV show, it is a police show. Everybody hates the cops, but everybody films about cops, right? <laughs> uh, Cop show, they're doing a chase down in, Han in, um, in Hancock Park. This guy hates production so much, he actually jumps in front of the vehicle when the um, chase is happening. So again, uh, coming back down, remember in the beginning we said that the film permit uh, allows you to have the authority to close down an area, to have a production, 4120A. My officers will come out and just like we cite the production for being in violation, and some of the things you guys do, that, that's a different seminar. Um, we, we do cite the production, we do cite the people that will interfere with your production. Um, this guy, uh, and we ended up having to actually book this guy uh, uh, for 4120, it's a misdemeanor, but at least we got him out of the area, we, we got him into jail, he, he sat in jail for maybe four hours, but guess what? The production <laughs> finished their, their, their take and everybody was happy. So knowing, having that excellent location manager, he should know, he or she should know uh, the neighborhoods you're going into. 
again, going back to Film LA, if you go to the Film LA website, if you go to uh, four filmmakers on their website, you click down for filmmakers, you click special locations, you click the special locations, and all of the neighborhoods will pop up. All of the neighborhoods, most of them, have some type of special condition. Um, you, you can't have catering on the street, catering has to be hidden, uh, some, and, and some others. Would you believe there's only two neighborhoods in the city of Los Angeles that actually have councilmatic rules in place? That's the Arts District in downtown and um, Echo Park, Silver Lake. So we can come in, my office can come in, and we can help you guys out as best as possible to mitigate an issue that you guys have in a neighborhood. Um, uh, if you guys want to film at night uh, and, and the neighborhood conditions are indicating, well, you know what, night, for to night production is, is generally uh, not allowed, we can get you guys in there. It, not a problem. We just have to make sure that we're talking to the right people and talking to the right neighbors to, to make it happen. And you have to come back with clean surveys. Okay? Okay. Look at that. <laughs> I love that you're checking them off. Yeah, I, I, I'm just going, I'm going straight That's down good. this stuff. You're covering everything. Yeah, great. and then, uh, okay, then uh, once, you're, once you're in your location, you have your fire safety standards, you know what, I'm big blue, big red, it was not invited. Um, your, uh, your locations, certain, certain locations will automatically require the uniform safety fire officer. That's the fire department comes out, he's the guy with the patch. Uh, he needs to be there. Uh, Hollywood Hills, um, most, most of the parks um, uh, where they have a condition, and guess what? They can shut down a production just like us. They, they will deem a production unsafe, and then they will call my office. They'll say, hey, Vinny, we're, we're going to shut this down. We need you to, to shut it down, and then we send out an alert, and then Film LA advises uh, the locations that, uh, lo that it's all been done. There was a production in Griffith Park uh, the end of last year, um, and you guys know this. There's a, there's a bulletin, a safety bulletin regarding some putt-putt generator. I don't, know which, I don't know which one it is, but a little bulletin says, hey, do not use these generators on film sets. They're uh, deemed hazardous, uh, fire, blah, blah, blah. Well, the fire safety officer shows up, does his check, and this production has like seven of them all over the parking lots powering different stuff. So what did he do? He called our office. We actually shut them down. Million dollars worth of equipment, people, were sitting, were sitting in, the, in the parking lot, and we shut them down. And they came back to us in Film LA to tie to appeal it because they wanted their insurance company to, to cover that stuff. It's not going to work. Once you violate a safety standard on a production, the, LA, well, the fire department will shut you down. Well, they'll tell us to shut you down, we'll shut them down. But please, understand, uh, make sure your, your, your designated safety officer understands what is going on and is, and is uh, caught up with all the rules to make sure that you're not gonna lose a million dollars in a day when, when my office shows up and, and uh, shuts everything down. And that also goes for uh, special effects, pyrotechnics, and stuff like that. Okay, let's talk firearms. Ooh. Everybody hates cops and everybody's against guns, but that's all we film, right? We film cops and guns. Come on, you guys. All right. <laughs> firearms. And, and the whole reason why there's a film permit is, <laughs> it's not because the city of Los Angeles wants the extra cash. We issue a film permit because it allows you guys to do everything correctly, okay? Correctly. Let me, let me tell you about firearms. Just a couple weeks ago, we've had two in the last 30 days. But just a couple weeks ago, everybody, anybody around for the um, Bank of America shooting that happened in 2006 where the guys came in, right? Matter of fact, uh, the LAPD at the time did not have patrol rifles. We had to actually go into a... Some officers uh, grabbed a black and white, they went to a gun store, they got uh, AR-15s and started shooting back on these guys. Um, terrible, it was a, all these people got shot, it was a big mess, big mess. Well, would you believe a couple weeks ago, 
um, a YouTube team for a comedy channel was at the same bank on a Saturday morning. And a black and white going down Lincolnshire looks over and sees a guy come out of the bank, ski mask, holding a rifle. Looks over and he is running to a car with the door open with two people in the car with have, that have ski masks. These officers quickly made a U-turn, put out a backup request, uh, helicopter, 14 units arrived. And next thing you know, these three were at gunpoint on the ground. But when they first got there and the guns came out, these kids started yelling, we are a film crew. People, that is so dangerous uh, when you do not contact. Y you know, I get it. There's some productions out there, especially some of the, the young kids in, in um, uh, film schools or, you know, everybody has that dream, right? Live the dream. But if you are going to be out there with a gun, a, a, a fake gun, and these guns looked real. I got pictures of all of this stuff. Please, at least, if you don't even have a permit, contact the local police department. Contact North Hollywood and say, hey, we're gonna be filming in the next 10 minutes and we are going to have guns. And, and a lot of times the watch commander will say, okay, we'll put it in the log so when the call does come out, at least the watch commander can come on the radio and say, hey guys, uh, we just got notified of a, of a film shoot. So make sure you call. So these kids were all cited for um, 4120, uh, filming without a film permit and uh, they are actually being filed on as we speak. I, I just spoke with the city attorney. It's a misdemeanor. These kids are not gonna get, it's, it's a slap. It's a $250 bail. But I required that uh, once they do their, um, once they go to court and the judge talks to them, that they're gonna have to come to my office and I'm, they're gonna sit down with my officers for at least an hour to talk about the importance of having a film permit. I'm also gonna have somebody from the Film LA Community Relations Office in the room, just so that we give these young filmmakers a, uh, a little bit of uh, education. But I mean, but that, that could have resulted in an accidental death. It Him coming out of oh, that could you imagine with a prop in his hand while talking, right. I mean, it could have been yeah. catastrophic. And, and you know, policing, I don't, you know, policing is a very dangerous job. You know, I wanna go home, everybody wants to go home. You get a new copper out of the academy and you give him the holy grail of shooting situations. Guy comes out of a bank with a gun, goes to a car with two people with masks and a gun. What do you think? You know, if that, if those kids would have turned mistakenly, what? That, I, I'm sorry. Uh, we would be all over the LA Times right now. But let's talk about something that happened just last Wednesday. Anybody remember, uh, if you listen to KNX 1070 on Tyndale Avenue, would you believe of all people who should know, Dr. Dre is filming his music video. At the 5300 block of Tyndale Avenue, he is filming at a consulate office for the Luxembourg uh, consulate. Um, a neighbor calls 911, I have the tape. There is a home invasion robbery occurring at the council office, the consulate, consular's office of Luxembourg. Well, the entire world showed up. And when they pull up, there are production vehicles on the street, oh, but the neighbors still called. What? And I don't know what kind of video this was or what, I, I sure like to see what the lyrics were, but <laughs> there were people bounding into the, into the backyards going to this house. And everyone was taken down at gunpoint. Uh, again, it, it could have been crazy. This actually made the news last Wednesday. Think about it for a moment. Dr. Dre, huge rap star, probably Sony, probably Sony telling him, hey, go do your video. It, just get your permit. Get your permit, make it safe for everyone involved, and do it correctly. Because now, look what happened. So, um, by the time the watch commander contacted me at home, blah, 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 would you believe? Nothing happened. They, uh, the production was very apologetic. They packed up all their toys and they left and I believe they put in for a permit on Friday uh, to, to get going. But 
just to go yeah. just to show you i mean think about that you know at a council office <laughs> counselor's office there you go so when you have the weapons you guys know if you have the the ones that actually shoot the the, the squibs or the load you know quarter load wh whatever you have your armor that does that the lapd and the fire department we do not get involved in that you guys know all that you guys know how to safely do that but the minute you guys are on a public street where the public can see you please make sure that you contact the local division to let them know that uh, you're going to be uh, having some kind of <laughs> firearm. And, and I've had productions contact me back saying, hey, Vince, uh, we're, we're going to have, you know, eight shots of quarter load and a house up in the Palisades, and it's all going to be interior. I can get away with the interior stuff. But anything over, you know, half load, or it all depends where, how the neighbors are. We have to kind of pull up the location up on Google Maps and, and take a look. We make that decision if you guys need to have a, a uniform officer at scene. Anytime you have uh, weapons being brandished or being shot, you're going to have an officer. An officer has to be there. Okay? All right. So we're getting tight. So how are we doing on the rest of it? You know what? I'm, I'm pretty good. I'm pretty much almost just a couple of things. Am okay. I being careful? Perfect. Out? Perfect. No, no not okay. at all. All right. <laughs> I'm trying to go as quickly as possible. I've only been on here 10 minutes, right? It's not bad. <laughs> okay. So... You know, let me just go back and uh, talk about these officers that are at scene. So you have an issue at a, at a production. You have that guy that comes out of nowhere with the axe. And you know what, ladies and gentlemen, we have videos. I mean, there's some, there's some crazy people in the neighborhoods that do not like productions. We had a survey come back uh, about a month ago uh, that he actually wrote in the survey, I hate this. <laughs> when I see these people, I'm going to drive my car oh, down the street and, and hit everybody. We had to send detectives out to his house to find out exactly what did he mean by that. Okay? If something happens, do not think, please, do not have the false sense that the two guys on all, both sides of your closure were the officers assigned to ITC, IPC, or the, the, the camera car for, for escort... Do not think that they are going to be your first responders. They'll, they, they are in a way, but you got to have somebody call 911. you got to have uh, the division uh, respond, okay? Uh, a lot of times in the middle of ITC uh, or, or the, the middle of the closure, we make you guys get the officers for traffic. City of Los Angeles, think about it. It's not like Burbank. There's no traffic out here. But in downtown LA where there's traffic, all of a sudden, you're, you're dealing with a, four, uh, with a four, um, 415 man, with a, a guy who is aggravated because the production is there, and you go get the officer, the officer will not leave his post. Because once he leaves his post, it opens up liability for not only the city of Los Angeles, but for you, because you had an officer at the closure, and now a car comes careening through because, hey, I want to go there. Okay, so just uh, have that in mind. When you go into locations that have issues, you may want to just hire um, more security, uh, either uh, by private security or having uniformed officers. And let me talk about private security. Well, no, I'm gonna down here. Well, let's go to uh, DOT compliances. So DOT, Department of Transportation, they're the ones that go out and do the postings for you, right? I need 72 hours. I need 72 hours to tell people that, hey, we are going to be blocking off the street or shutting down the curb lane and actually taking you out of your parking spot. I need that. So please, it's very hard. You guys, sometimes some productions come in and they'll think they can... It's all creativity, right? You guys are driving down the street, go, hey, we want to film there tomorrow. Call Film LA. God, I don't want to say this out loud, but it is possible. You can. <laughs> but here I go. <laughs> right? Yeah, well, that's going to be on YouTube. So, so you can, but it, you can with restrictions. No posting, nobody's, everything's on property. But the minute you need posting, the minute you're going to close down curb lanes, the second you're going to close down streets, I need three days. Okay? Okay. 
And here's the beauty about having your security people, and please do not tell your security people to do this. Because every time we show up, when we get a complaint, so the, the posting is from 6 a.m. till um, 7 a.m. till 10 p.m., no parking, right, for posting. Well, production will send the security guard company the night before. And what do you think the production, what do you think these guys are doing? They are putting up signs at 11 o'clock at night prior to the posting, which is totally illegal, okay? My guys come back, that's violation of your film permit. We come back and we cite the, uh, the locations manager. By the way, whoever does get cited, it's the locations guy. If the locations guy is not there, which is very rare, we go after the producer. If the producer is too busy, we go to the, uh, the director. And think about that. Every second that we're there, every minute, your production's on hold while we're doing our investigation to, to, to give the citation. But when it comes down to the DOT compliances, do not, do not have your security guard company come in the night before and hold spots. I know it's kind of hard because you want to come in with your trucks and all the toys that are coming and you want to be able to park. But... If you guys get caught, it's, it's a citation, and in some cases, we can revoke the permit, okay? Hmm. All right, evacuations. You know what? I've seen call sheets that um, are really, really good. They give you the, lo the name of the police station, uh, the fire department, uh, all your, your ingress, egress. Um, definitely talk amongst yourselves. Talk to your uh, safety officer. Uh, you know what, I know you guys, before you guys start filming for the day, there's somebody that always stands in the middle of the room, right? And tells everybody where the exits are, where, where we're gonna get everybody out. So, you know, that's, that's on you guys. Drone use. Um, you know what, drones are pretty much, they're here, right? Everybody has a drone nowadays. Besides flying for fun, which is um, part 336 of the, of the drone stuff, um, it doesn't apply to commercial filming, okay? It does not apply. Your guy has to be a commercial pilot. He has to have part 107, um, and, he, and, he, and you guys have to do a, complete the drone questionnaire with Film LA. It comes to me, and I wanna see the flight plan. I wanna see the, uh, the FAA uh, registration for the pilot. I can care less about the ship. But the pilot, I need to see what his experience is, okay? Because literally, there is no flying over crowds. But the way productions get away with it is you guys are considered a closed set. So that's how the, uh, the, the drone uh, comes around, okay? Important notes. And then um, important notes, union stuff. I'm gonna let the union guys talk about that. Is that okay? <laughs> yeah, and again, if there was anything that came to mind that you thought would be pertinent, but if nothing, yeah, then no. don't worry about it. Hey, so what do you think? Did it all in about 15 minutes? Not bad. <laughs> Try to keep it snappy. 35. Yeah. <laughs> uh, does anybody have any questions or do we? Yeah, I actually, I want to open it up to the, okay. whole, the whole panel for questions. Uh, we have a, a few minutes, so anything that you guys have pressing that, I mean, we only had five and a half hours, so we covered a lot, but uh, surely you do or do not have questions. The resources first. I was just going to kind of leave it up, but if you want to talk to it, you can talk to it, yeah. Well, just real quick, um, in the uh, room earlier was uh, Liz Campos, who's uh, the head of the IA Training Trust Fund. Oh, I wanted to meet her. Oh, you did? Oh, sorry. Anyway, Liz um, wanted me to remind everybody that if you're working under the Area Standards Agreement outside of, of LA County, um, the Training Trust Fund does have training that you can take advantage of. If you're, on, if you, if you're under one of the Area Standards Agreements, so it's a union contract throughout the rest of the United States, there is money available to do training. Um, recently, a Castle Rock production in New England needed training for high angle rescue. They applied for the money from uh, the training trust fund. I went out and spent two days training at the New England studios for the local out there and for the Castle Rock productions. So there's, there is training. We talked about a little bit earlier um, that training trust fund is starting to do an awful lot. There is a lot of training. It's not as significant or as um, detailed as the safety pass program. They're heading in that direction. Someday it'll be 
it'll be up to snuff as the, as the safety pass. But there is training that you can take and take advantage of. Perfect. And I, a lot of this we've already kind of covered, so I didn't want to dwell on it. But I do have the link to the PGA, um, the the site, which again we we kind of link to a lot of their companies or uh, companies that we've mentioned. Um, but if you if you forget this link, which actually they made it much simpler than it used to be, you can just go to the PGA website and search. Um, there's on the drop down on the right. If you can navigate the site on the drop down on the right, it's a safety initiative, and then it has um, just a tons of resources, videos of all of our past um, uh, presentations, panels. Um, lots of helpful uh, links. Um, so yeah, it's a really great uh, resource, or at least will help point you in the direction to another site that will also be a, a really significant resource. So um, so a lot of good stuff out there. Um, but yes, what, what questions do you guys have? Sorry. <laughs> Don't start over, but just keep going. <laughs> oh. Repeat the question? No, no, no we got it. Okay. Do you want to take that, Michael? <laughs> I'll give it a shot. Uh, you know, yeah, non disclosure. I, I mean, it's hard to tell. I can't just say a black and white answer without knowing, as we talked about earlier, hiring responsible or hiring the appropriate and responsible people. Um, an actress would be one of those. So, n not knowing what kind of diligence was done to see is she physically capable of doing the type of stunt that you may be asking her to do. Um, you know, it's a live and learn situation. If you don't do that at the front end, then you kind of live with it on the back end. However, if she didn't disclose that she was injured prior to doing the stunt, and I, when I look at it in my eyes, I can't see where the production's responsible for that. Um, but I'm not. You know, I'm not an expert when it comes to deciding who's at fault with that, but there's a lot of other information that has to be gathered to be able to do that. But if you do it on the front end, do your assessment of the people that you're going to be in. Remember, your assets are your people, your location, and your equipment. So um, you have to be just as diligent with, with your actors and actresses as you do with your, with your crews. So, that, I mean, that's my two cents. 